My name is Mr. Musser. I'm here at the beautiful Oregon Caves National Monument and Preserve to teach you about some science. So in today's video, we're going to talk about cave formations. With me, I have Ranger Anastasia. Hey! So she's going to take us inside the cave and show and explain all these formations. So are you ready? Let's go see some stuff. Awesome. So what we're looking at here is a stalactite hanging down from the ceiling because stalactites hang tight to the ceiling. Down below it there, we have a stalagmite that you might trip over. Those stalactites form starting with a little baby soda straw. Those soda straws have little drops of water hanging off of the end of them and that does eventually plug up that hollow tube. At that point, the water flows down over the outside of the soda straw, depositing that calcite there. So they start to get larger and that's when we call them stalactites. Those stalagmites form because the water dripping down off of the stalactite hits the ground there and deposits what calcite it has left to cause that stalagmite to start growing up away from the ground and eventually they meet in the middle, which is when we get those columns. So what are we looking at here? This is a column and we get a column when a stalactite and a stalagmite have grown down to meet each other. Of course our stalagmites are growing up from the ground because of those stalactites and this column here is formed out of calcite crystals that have all grown right on top of each other to give us this beautiful formation. This one's a whole lot taller than I am, and it's pretty amazing. We believe that this formation here is between three and 500,000 years old. What we're looking at here are the growth rings from a stalagmite that got broken off the ground to create the path going through our cave. These rings are sort of like the growth rings inside of a tree, but they form a little bit differently. We don't get one ring for each and every year. We have these smaller dark rings that are created during glacial periods when all of our water is stuck up in those glaciers nice and frozen so it's not coming down through our cave. These bigger lighter rings here are those interglacial periods when all of that water is melting and coming down through our cave and giving it a lot more of an opportunity to grow that formation. All right. We went inside the cave with Ranger Anastasia. Now with me, I have Ranger Cat. And she's gonna take us in and show us a little bit more of the unique features and formations that can be All in our right. caves. Are you ready? I'm ready, you ready? All right, yeah, let's All head right. on in. Let's go. All right, Ranger Cat, so what are we looking at? All right, so we're at a pretty interesting room right now. We're in one of the first rooms of the cave where we get our first examples of speleothems. That's the science word for cave formations. If you take a look up here, the ones we're looking at are baby stalactites. They're called soda straws. You might notice that some of them are kind of hollow in the middle. That's why they're called soda straws. These formed in a pretty cool way. Right now we're standing about 50 feet below the surface. Some of you might notice that there's little droplets of water hanging off of these soda straws. That water made its way through about 50 feet of marble to get into this cavern we're standing in. So those water droplets made their way through about 50 feet of marble, picking up a mineral called calcite. That calcite made its way through here. Some of those water droplets strip down and some of them are going to evaporate. The ones that evaporate deposit that mineral calcite. Calcite likes to build on top of itself. And if you give it long enough time, we'll see these small formations or little soda straws right here. So cavers tend to be underground for long periods of time and of course they usually get hungry and start naming some things after food. Right now we're looking at a formation called cave popcorn. You can kind of see that it looks like popcorn. This was formed in a pretty interesting way. It's formed by airflow coming through here and evaporating the water while calcite is depositing making it look like these weird burbly looking popcorn shapes. So right now we're getting that airflow from right over here. We have a natural cave opening. So right now we're at a really cool formation called Cave Bacon. 
This is a really thin type of banded drapery. Cave bacon, like all of our cave formations, is formed by dripping running water. It started up here and made its way down to here, which is why a lot of our formations tend to look like melting things, running water, or even icicles. So caves are a really interesting place to see some formations that possibly look like other things you'd see on the surface. If you take a look over here, our rangers call this formation the cat stuck in the drain pipe. If you shift your focus up here, we do like to say that our cave has a heart. And if you look over here, maybe some of you will see an old man's face or possibly an alligator's head. Now these formations are pretty cool and really bizarre. They're called moon milk. If you look over here, this cat's tail. Moon milk was formed by bacterial colonies growing on an old rootsicle. Now as those bacterial colonies grew, they developed a calcite shield over top of them. Unfortunately, our bacterial colonies died off quite a while ago, and our moon milk is no longer active. If it was still active, what you'd be looking at right now would have a glossy sheen over it, kind of slimy looking. And if you touched it, it'd feel a little bit like cottage cheese-like or wet clay-like in texture. So that's going to do it today for our video about cave formations. A big thank you to Ranger Anastasia and Ranger Cat for helping us identify them and explain them, and we'll see you next time.